The last video that I just put up was on how to check the compression in your lawnmower. Just like this one right here. I used this exact lawnmower in that video. It has no compression at all. If you guys want to see that video or if you missed it, I got uh, links up here in the information button for you, as well as at the end of this video, I got some clickable thumbnails there for you too. This is a GCV 160 Honda engine, no compression. We are definitely gonna find out why it doesn't have any compression today. I got a lot of parts in this shop right now that are GCV 160 engine parts, Honda parts. So hopefully also at the end of this video, we're gonna also be able to repair it and get this thing running. Hey guys and girls, thank you so much for tuning in to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. Website right there, dot com. Check it out when you like. As far as today goes, this Honda engine has absolutely no compression. Check this out. You can spin this around and around and around. Look at this. I mean, the spark plug is in there tight. The boot's off. That's very important. Make sure that when you do this, that that spark plug's, uh, the boot, the connection is off of there. And it just goes around and around and around. There's absolutely no compression there at all. 99% chance that it's something wrong in the valve train underneath this valve cover right here. You see this valve cover? There's something going on in there. We can find a lot of information, a lot of information from taking this valve cover off and looking in there. Four of them. Put those aside. Now, guess what? That cover's glued on there. There's not a gasket behind that, that valve cover right there. It's glued on with some of this uh, gasket make, making sealant. Honda calls it Honda Bond. Um, I have a, a link on my description. If you want to go back and look at the description links there, that's going to be part of that. But when we pull that off, there's gonna be some residual engine oil that's in that valve cover right there is gonna come out. So, what I do usually is just take a old rag and stick it underneath there so it doesn't make too much of a mess like that. Now we have to actually pry that cover off of there. Flat screwdriver. Sometimes this is a little bit of a challenge for you. You work on one corner. Just be as careful as you can so you're not bending that cover too much. And uh, you know what? I already got the starter off this thing. It's going to make it a lot easier if I just pull that off. See how I did that? The starter's off of there. That just pulls off like that. Now we can kind of get a screwdriver in there a little bit better. And uh, we got to just work one corner is what I usually do. And you're going to hear... Once you get that one corner off, you're gonna actually hear that uh, gasket making sealant stuff start to rip. You can hear it start to rip and tear. And once you get that, you probably can't, nope, oh, boom, just look at that. Check that out. Let's get that out of the way. Look at that. That valve cover came off and it is glued. There's a little oil in there. See that little oil there? And look at all that oil that just poured out of there. It's not that big of a deal. It's gonna just soak on your rag there a little bit. You know what I you know what I usually do in this case? Because sometimes if your engine oil is a little bit full, it's gonna keep coming out. Jack your your front of your engine up like this and hold that nose of that up somehow like that. Like that. And now that dripping's gonna stop all your, it, it, it's just gravity, right? Gravity's holding it back down there. Now, oh, there it is right there. Look at this, the intake valve, the intake valve is stuck. This right here is your exhaust valve. I'm turning, I'm turning the engine over, watch this. 
the exhaust valve goes in. Now that exhaust valve right there is open and I, I keep turning it over and it instantly springs out. This is your intake valve right here. Look what's happening. It does not come back out. That intake valve is stuck wide open. There's no compression in that. There's no possible way this engine can run with that intake valve stuck open. If you let an engine sit for a long period of time, we're talking maybe one or two years maybe, uh, the, the gasoline that has been coming in there and coating that intake valve starts to get gluey. If you let it go really long, it turns into this little green crust kind of stuff. But that's stuck right there. It ain't coming out. That is just wide open intake valve right there. That's why it doesn't have any compression. Take this, this is super easy to do this, you guys. You take this little rocker arm off. You just push this pin up like that with your finger and pull that little pin out of there. Not even any tools required. You pull that pin out and then the whole rocker arm thing just pulls right off of there. Now there's your intake valve. You can see how this in the, the exhaust valve, that's the one that's closest to your muffler, springs in and out just like that. That's how it should work. Nice and free. This intake valve right here, look at that. You push it in and it doesn't come back out. It just stays in. So that's your valve is wide open. There's no compression in there. We need that intake valve to be just as free and just as... Uh, as a uh, unsticky as that exhaust valve right there. I've done this many times. I think that we need to just clean that. And I think we can, I don't even think we need to take the carburetor off to be honest with you. I think we just need to uh, clean that stem right there. Normally, I've done this so many times in my life, I use just choke cleaner, choke cleaner, carb cleaner, whatever you got, and it's gonna kind of melt that gluey stuff and make that valve start popping in and out uh, a lot freer and unstick the valve is pretty much what we're doing. I am actually dying to try this stuff that my brother showed me, this concoction that, that uh, he told me about a long time ago. Again, you know what, if you wanna know how to make this stuff, I, again, in the information button at the end of this video, I'll put that link up there for you on how to make this. Uh, I'm going to try this. I just got to do this. Again, if you don't have this stuff, carb cleaner will work, but I'm going to use this. What we do is we just squirt some of this stuff on the back of the valve stem right there. And we're just trying to melt that gluey kind of old gas stuff on there to make this valve free up again. See how that works? It's still sticky. You can actually hear that. So we just keep squirting stuff on there to lubricate and clean that valve stem right there. We just keep punching it in and out like that with our thumb. And look at that. That thing's actually absolutely clear now. Absolutely clean from that. Let's put that rocker arm back on now. So easy to do. It's unbelievable that there's no tools required in here. Just done. Done. Now let's turn that around. The spark plug's still in. Let's just check this and see what happens. Oh, can you see that? Let's, uh, let's just take that right off so you can I can actually see this flywheel. Check this out. Boom! Look! Look at what it's doing! It's got compression now. I'm absolutely tickled pink. That didn't cost us any money at all right there. That's awesome. That intake valve is is absolutely free now. We got compression in that engine now. What we got to do is put that cover back on now. Uh, before I do that though, you know what? Um, I'm going to check the valve clearances on this. Um, I'm not going to bore you on this video with that because I already have a video on that again guys up in the I button at the end of this video clickable thumbnail I'll put that in there for you too. how to actually check the valve clearances on that So I'm going to do that before I put this valve cover back on Okay, so we just jump forward right there 
Uh, I just checked the two valve clearances, the intake and exhaust, and the, the, the valve clearances, feeler gauges, they're exactly perfect, exactly where they should be. So I'm not even going to worry about that right now. Let's just get this valve cover back on. So I just got that valve cover buttoned all back up on there again. Um, if you want to know how to do that, just follow the instructions right on the back of whatever kind of gasket making material that you have. It tells you right on there how to do it. And uh, on mine, it says wait an hour after you do that before you start the engine. So that's what we're going to do. And you know what? That gives me just enough time to actually put everything back on, put it all back together, uh, spark plug back on, starter, everything all back on. Okay, guys. It's been about an hour and a half since I let that uh, sealant dry on that uh, valve cover gasket. So we're ready to start this thing now. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here, guys. Bear with me. We got compression now, but uh, we're going to throw the choke on, on this thing and we're going to see uh, how many pulls it takes to get this thing going. Bear with me, like I say, five, six, seven pulls maybe, but just let's just check this out and see what's going to go on. Choke's on. There she is, guys. Wow. How much money did that cost us to just get that lawnmower running? It had no compression. It cost no parts. There was no parts involved. It was a little gasket making material, a little carb spray, something like that, but no parts involved. You just turned a junk lawnmower that couldn't run possibly at all with no compression and you fixed it that easy. Now that's pretty cool, guys. Give me that thumbs up button, guys like it subscribe to my channel put some comments down underneath the video right here let me know what you think about that if you got any other suggestions you got something to say that's awesome do it share this with your friends till the next video guys i hope that helped steve out